I tell people, I can tell when mothers and fathers are living a life, their children and daughters are following them in the church. And you take that as a blueprint for your life. Don't leave your children at home. You'll go to the game, you'll go to the club, but you won't go to church together. So, what's your question, Brother Well, even, even with that as a prelude, um, you know, it's been an honor for us to be the media team. Uh, the pandemic put us here, um, and now here we are recording such a historical moment, which came from a conversation that I had with them when we talked about um, Mr. Lewis. You know, somebody had to record it. You know, so for this to be a historical moment, and, and being former military, I've been all over the country, been to a lot of different types of churches where I didn't even know what they were saying. And to come here, when I got to Jackson 12 years ago, I've never gone anywhere else other than with you to visit other places. And now to witness a church being, where well, the mortgage is being burned. That's the first time for me. So. You going through that process, my question for you is, I know what we can say to the public, to the cameras and all that, but how do you feel? You know, just, just as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a leader, as a reverend, as a pastor. Well, I guess I have to say it like Ali. He beat Joe Frazier and somebody says, how do you feel? I heard that interview. He said, I don't know, I've been hit hard by Joe. It's been a long fight. And the fight ain't over even though they told me I won. I have to deal with what Ali was saying, the side effects. And when I look back at his life, he woke up not able to talk. Some people said his punch drunk. There's always a cost to anything you do. I hope I didn't pay too much. Believe me, if the Lord's son die on Calvary, there are going to be some dying in all of his servants. And sometimes you don't know what died until you try to live with it. And uh, that's the way I am in life now. I'm reflecting. I'm having a lot of nights of reflecting. I'm writing keeping journals, I reflect on uh, or Shirley Glenn, no longer here, but played great contributions. How do I rank her in my story? Great. She captured every name of people that died in the old church that I never met. And there might be some left out, but I know she gave her best to help me to be the best. How do you talk about an Annette Jones, who and my wife had a gift, but it wasn't birthed because the people didn't want it to be her? Directed the choir and honored me so well that she convinced her home church in Flint, Michigan to call me for my first revival ever. How do you thank God for sending a Jackie Campbell, who's now Jackie Jones, who was the secretary for Eddie Long before he became Bishop Long and brought that explosive gift, Pastor Hines, you got to keep good records. Didn't really understand the impact of those people until years later. And that's what I see in you all. And so I know how to appreciate you a little bit better because something else died. And so, you know, it's a good journey. I'm trying to really look at pictures and go, man, I found a picture that one of the members sent home Sunday. It was a picture of me carrying my daughter. I was like, that girl too big to be on my hip. But I enjoyed carrying her. Uh, I liken that to carrying this church. It was too big for me to carry as long as I did, but I enjoyed it. But then there was another picture of a man who had a lot of hair. He don't have a lot of hair now. Um, Brother Albert Peterson. Man, and I'm just, man, we're pretty young. You know, 
looking at a picture of my wife. Girl, you look like a kid. I go, what was wrong with them people trusting us, the leader? But when God orchestrates something, he'll even hide you from yourself. You can't see who you are until God lets you see yourself. And you know, it's been a good journey, so I pray that you will be able to glean from your journey to help enjoy your present. You know, uh, to say, me, my wife, son, and daughter captured the moment. People really don't even know what's the magnitude of this day. Um, man, last 20 years, the first church that was being birthed in the turn of the century in Jackson, Michigan. There's a magazine that says, Why Come to Jackson? They listed in 2001, Lily Missionary Baptist Church. That was not our church for opinion. That was the city commission who wrote a book that said the reason to come to Jackson was because of Lily Missionary Baptist Church. You know, that takes me, I know we have a couple other questions, but that takes me to a part two with what you just said. Because me from Jackson, Mississippi, now being in Jackson, Michigan, wanted to leave. But because of Lily and your leadership, I'm still here. And I've heard leaders often say, especially after they travel around the country and go different places, once they get into that quote unquote retirement mode, now I want to go back to the places that I've never seen. So you were there, but didn't really get to enjoy them because you were working. What is one of those places? Where is there a church that you'd like to go just to watch the service? Well, the Lord blessed me. Um, last year, you took me there. I was called to preach at the Bethel Baptist Church. Pastor Bob Smith called me. He replaced my legend, my, my idol, Reverend Shell Franklin. I'll never forget that morning. I had preached a couple of Sundays before that, years before. But that Sunday morning, they took me in the historic museum room and told me to sit in this chair. And I go, why? And he said, sit there. Reverend Franklin sat in that chair and preached out of it. And I never forgot. I was looking at my shoes that morning going, it couldn't have been nobody but God to orchestrate he don't really understand, as a child, I always dreamed to sit in the seat that the late C.L. Franklin sat in. And I said, wow, the Lord did that and more for me. And so it's been a tremendous journey. Um, I want to travel and see some of the world with my wife. But when I started to look back, we've been a whole lot of places ministering. But I want to go back being able to capture with a season view. You know, I've been in the city sitting in hotels. And I should have been walking down the street looking at buildings and talking to people. If it wasn't for the pandemic right now, would, there, would you imagine the outcome being different and having the same atmosphere of people around you? Yeah, well, the pandemic was God's way for me getting out of my nest. The nest got comfortable. Uh, always carried a good crowd. People would always say, you some kind of preacher. Well, I didn't understand the pandemic pushed me beyond my borders, and now it's all over the world. Now people are giving me feedback to who are you and what a great message. And is that man for real? Can anybody be that faithful? And so uh, it reminds me when I first came, we had a broadcast radio station. Um, but the announcer wouldn't re never recognize me as the pastor. And so... I said, if y'all cannot recognize me as the pastor, we'll come off the radio station. And they got a petition. But before the petition could be signed, the radio station went out of business. And now we're here on Facebook, YouTube, 
and the radio. And that radio was only local for Jackson County. And I just think, man, when God says yes, nobody can say no. So, I hear you sometimes say, or quite often actually, uh, when you say it makes you, we make you feel, as a, a small person, feel big, right? Mm -hmm. How was it for you when you heard me say in that back room, you're no longer you're just local, you know, people, whether it be talking about you or having to actually come to the church, but then I told you, with, with everything that we've moved on to with technology, anybody can see a video of you preaching anywhere in the world. Yeah. Well, I've been regurgitating on that. I ask you now, how much I did you know? Now I'm looking at pictures. Man, I wish somebody told me button my shirt off. You know, uh, it really doesn't make a difference. It's a great thank you to God. As I didn't know you was going to send me help to go into all of the world. And I couldn't imagine that. Sometime when you're fighting on the front line, you can't even see the infantry on their side or what you got because you're busy fighting. And you all and many others bring a freshness to my ministry that I can enjoy the journey. That's why I always talk about retirement. It's not that I'm walking out of the pulpit. I'm walking out of the fight into the pleasure. And so uh, when you say stuff like that, yeah, they have really um, made me feel like my daughter said to me, or my wife said to me about my daughter, my daughter was away at a soccer meet in Flint, Michigan. And I didn't go because I had a, a work assignment here at the church. And it was the first time I ever missed one of her meets. And my wife came home and everybody looked like they was uncomfortable with it. I said, what happened? And my wife said, a man ran on the field and challenged the lease. And all the coaches from both sides went out there and stopped it. My daughter was very gifted, and she must have been in the fifth grade. She was playing on the eighth grade uh, traveling uh, AAU team, and she, was, she scored all the goals. And a fan came out the stand and wanted to fight her. And she said something that forever blessed me. She said, if my father would be there, you wouldn't run out here on me. And I just said, wow, that girl think that much of me? Now, he probably would have ran out there, but he'd have never got back up where he ran from. And so um, it made me feel good as a father, a protector. I don't know where she saw that in me, but that's how I say when y'all, where do they see this in me? Is God showing something about me? to you and to others. And I'm glad that that's the image God is portraying to me. You're never in control at anything. You can only give God the glory. A man who's a fool don't want to be a fool. But he's a fool. Just the mercy of God who kept us in the silence of our mind. I saw a lady today, I was in the rummage and she had uh, fallen down and I thought she was tripped and the lady was like, you want me to help you up? And she was like, no, I'll get this. And I came over and I got about four feet from the lady and I smelled tons of liquor. And I said, Lord, I thank you that you didn't allow me to pick up that bottle because she can't put it down. It only is putting her down. And I thought about the scripture, strong drinks will make a mockery of People don't heed the warning. 
So then they become beguiled by the seed. So I just said, the Lord was merciful to me. It could have been me. I worked in a bar. I never drank. I ran with people who drank. I didn't drink. God just had a plan for my life. And I thank God that he had a plan for me. Well, we definitely would like to, uh, on behalf of the media, tell back over the years, that's a long time. That, that's a long time for a person to do anything. Um, and we're glad you cleared it up about the retirement piece. You know, that uh, you're just retiring from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm not going to run and cut the grass and open the door and uh, pray and write the sermon and open up. God have sent the team to do the task. And it's time for me to let him. That was the sermon last Sunday. And I'm letting you clear. It's time for the team to do the task. It's time for the team to do the task. And it tells me, back, back, take your hands off and enjoy a different ministry, a different lifestyle. It's time for the team to take over the task. And that's what I see in the Johnson uh, who have uh, made the media team ministry. You know, I could see myself probably taking my phone, recording myself, putting it out on YouTube and Facebook. But the Lord has saw fit for someone else. And I tell you, sometimes it goes, you have to watch God. I remember there used to be a lady that sits back in the church and used to film me. And I used to go, I want to be in control of what's going out. But God was trying to tell me, you need to be exposed. And i never forget, one of the members I used to pastor, called me and said, Pastor, I thank God for that sermon. I go, what sermon? She said, I saw it on Facebook. And that was the Smalls family. And then I tried to incorporate her and her gift to broaden the, the media ministry. And uh, I told your dad, meet me here. And uh, Brother Peterson, Sister Hines, and I brought a church I had preached for in the morning. They media team down and they was all talking about their phone. And then we come to find out that the channel that we had uh, didn't have the security code. Another member over there had created. All meant well, but it was not under my direction. And I tell people, under my direction, but not under my control. And so it went from there to, all right, let's get our own phone. And then it went from Pastor Hines, let's use real cameras. Then I says, hey, this is your gift, your IT, do your thing, IT, it, it's your thing. And so um, it had mushroom and grown into this. There'll be a plaque uh, Saturday, most people won't pay it any mind. It will be a rose cut out of newspaper clippings. It's pieces of story that made the rose. That's basically what have happened here at the Little Michigan Baptist Church. So, I pray that you have enjoyed this and that you can uh, take things home with you and tell the story so you too, when you face challenges, you can say God is able. Uh, we didn't just pay $16,500 one time we was paying 85000 a month, but God.